a round of applause for the Storpool team, which will talk about their integration with Apache CloudStack. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Are you showing it? So you I, can can I can just shout, but it's going to be uh, loud, much louder than the microphone. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll just start with a quick intro of the three of us. Uh, so nice to meet you. I'm Alex, uh, the product lead at Storpo. I'm going to talk a little bit about the company, about uh, the products and services, and the use cases we address. Uh, Venko is our solutions lead, sitting over there uh, on the panel. Uh, he's <laughs> going to do the introduction to uh, Storpo Storage as a product, a little bit, talk a little about our integration with um, CloudStack and the te technical benefits it has. And then we have Slavka. The person who actually matters and does everything uh, <laughs> on, in terms of development uh, on the cloud stack uh, side integration. Um, she will talk a little bit um, about the integration that we have and how it works and about the um, features and benefits of our integration uh, with cloud stack. Um, so, jumping into it, um, Storpo Storage um, is a company that's committed to uh, helping people do everything they do faster. So we have uh, hundreds of uh, storage systems uh, based on all, all flash uh, architectures around the world. Um, we are in business for 11 years already. Um, until this point, we've been de deploying uh, Storpo in many countries. Now we have um, Storpo storage systems in over 30 countries around the world. Um, and we are over 50 people um, working uh, in, in the company. Um, with new people being added in the USA as well. Um, overall, we are, as it says, primary workload experts. Uh, we have a proven track record. We are a global software company, and um, um, we've been stable and profitable for the last four or five years already and continue to grow. Um, recently, we were awarded as the Software Defi Defined Storage Vendor of the Year in 2020 at the Storage Awards. Um, we were up against uh, IBM in that particular race, and Storpo Storage was chosen by the jury. Um, we also had the um, honor to be awarded for the uh, project where our customer, Dustin Group, replaced um, VMware, Hyper-V, all their different uh, primary storage arrays so with the uh, um, next generation IT stack with, based on Open Nebula and uh, uh, KVM and uh, Storpo Storage. Um, in terms of products and services, Storpo has a portfolio that uh, consists of five products and services today. So we have Storpo Storage, um, the, the product that actually is the core for everything that the company does. Um, it converts customer servers into primary storage systems that are high performance and linearly scalable. Um, the second is the Storpo Analytics. Uh, with it, we, we collect millions, uh, really hundreds of millions of metrics every day. Uh, so we can visualize uh, deep insights into each storage system's uh, performance, reliability, availability, everything. Uh, then we have Storpo alerts and reporting. This tool converts everything, uh, all the metrics that we collect into per node, per host, per volume, and per for whole system alerts and reports. And um, going on, we have Storpo volume care. It does uh, periodic automatic snapshotting and replication of uh, snapshots to local or remote uh, lower storage tiers. Uh, together, these four products enable the Storpool managed service that we provide so that um, basically our experts use all of the different products uh, that we've developed uh, to monitor the storage systems in production, open support tickets, and deal with any potential issues before they impact uh, customer workloads. <coughs> Um, going deeper into the last one, uh, for every customer, we uh, include in the license the design of uh, storage systems. So we help them to select the ideal, cheapest architecture for the cloud that they're building uh, at the physical, network, and logical levels. Um, we deploy Storpo storage for them, so we install them on their servers. Um, after that, we fine-tune everything, so we make sure that whatever workloads they're going to be running, um, everything is set up so that it's functioning optimally. Uh, from there, we monitor and we maintain every single storage system. So that includes um, performing updates, upgrades, um, in adding servers when it's needed, and so on. 
Our typical customers are uh, following modern cloud infrastructure practices. So they're very API driven. They have their own DevOps experts. Uh, they're using different cloud management platforms, uh, cloud stack being one of the primary ones we are seeing in the market. Um, they offer different, either different kinds of public cloud services, um, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, VPS, um, and so on, or they're offering uh, private cloud services for uh, SMB, basically tailored solutions for SMBs and enterprises in their local um, city, country, state, depending on the um, location where they're run, uh, running their business. Um, the typical uh, storable storage system is using um, o OSSD, uh, so it's SATA, SAS, or NVMe-based SSD uh, systems, um, and the workloads that we support are um, databases, uh, virtual desktops, and so on, uh, running in uh, typically virtual machines, but also in some cases um, in containers or uh, bare metal hosts. Um, yay! <laughs> um, so the scale that we support is anywhere from 100 terabyte uh, single uh, app systems to uh, tens of petabytes spread across multiple data centers, um, depending on the customer's needs. Uh, a a case, case study example, quickly, um, we were working with uh, Amito for the last uh, three or four years. Um, when we started working with them, they've, they have been uh, having a lot of difficulties, as you can see. So they, were, uh, they tried a lot of things out there in the market, and they were having uh, challenges. Basically, nothing brought the results that they needed for the foundation for their uh, cloud. Uh, so they wanted to implement a new, reliable, high-performance um, primary storage for uh, multiple data centers. Um, in this case, we uh, came up against um, pure storage and HP Nimble storage. And uh, from, the, from all perspectives, uh, Storpo outperformed them, and uh, the TCO uh, kind of closed the deal. Uh, the total cost of ownership came up to what Amitu was looking for. Uh, final summary, uh, as mentioned already, typically we are helping with um, virtual disks for virtual machines, databases, uh, virtual desktops, Kubernetes workloads. Um, you can see some of our customers like uh, Cloud Sigma, Atos, uh, Cargurus, that are um, running large scale store pool storage systems today. And uh, uh, the workloads that some of those customers run are, for example, the likes of uh, Siemens, Deutsche Börse, and uh, several other uh, large companies, large enterprise co companies in the world. So I'm going to hand over to Venko. Thanks, Alex. You don't need this. So uh, this is what our company does. And uh, now what is actually, what, what the product is, the main product, store pool, store pool storage. So store pool storage is a software that runs on standard Linux servers. Uh, and uh, make build of them a cluster of uh, a primary storage system. Uh, it uh, implements a distributed architecture, so it combines all the capacity and the performance of all the uh, storage devices installed in the servers to build a continuous uh, storage space that is uh, uh, can be used by by the clients of the system. So this way, every client has a, uh, has access to the entire capacity and to the, the entire performance of the storage system. Um, and uh, because Torpool is a software that runs on standard Linux, uh, it can be deployed on a, a dedicated storage nodes to build a dedicated storage system, or Storpool software can be also deployed on the compute nodes, and this way you can build a hyper-converged uh, cloud where the same node plays uh, is simultaneously a compute, computing node and a storage node. Um, Storpool cluster can be built with a heterogeneous hardware, so you can combine different type of servers with a different from different models, different generations of CPU and amount of RAM and so on, and you can mix and match different uh, types and different size of drives in your cluster. Uh, such as uh, you can have in the same cluster and in the same node uh, hard drives, traditional hard drives, SATA, SAS, or NVMe SSD devices. So, StorePool is using uh, synchronous replication 
of the of the data between the nodes to protect the data across data loss and uh, to ensure service availability uh, in case of uh, service outage. So for every write operation coming from the client, uh, the data is synchronously replicated on uh, different storage nodes. This way, if uh, a node or a disk uh, goes down, uh, Storpool will use the replicas that are available on the other storage node to continue uh, uh, operates without, without interruption and to protect uh, user data. So this, uh, when combined with uh, uh, automatic data recovery and uh, intelligent disk management and network redundancy uh, features, uh, ensures the have a high availability of the storage system. So, um, Storeful produ provides a rich uh, data management functions. Uh, it includes team provisioning for all the volumes, uh, efficient snapshots and clones uh, uh, that use uh, replication on write, uh, per volume QoS, uh, per volume storage tiering, um, with uh, uh, all the integration that we have with the cloud management system, uh, Storpool uh, is using uh, one Storpool volume per virtual disk. This that allows all these uh, features to be exposed to the cloud management system. Um, and when using this, uh, have a, having all these features implemented at the storage layer, uh, we can uh, eliminate unnecessary levels of uh, overhead like QCAO images, uh, file system, LVM volume management, and so on. So all the storage operations are uh, done at the storage uh, layer uh, offloading uh, hypervisors. And all this is controlled through a, a RESTful uh, JSON API for all the volume, volume management and cluster management. So Storepool is built. Yeah, yeah. So Storepool is built for uh, high performance use cases. Um, it targets demanding applications that uh, are sensitive to storage latency and that uh, traditionally can only be enabled uh, on local NVMe devices. With Storepool, now these applications can benefit from the uh, reliability uh, and flexibility of the shared storage system, and at the same time, uh, uh, have the, uh, the the required performance. Uh, on this diagram, you can see uh, the breakout of the latency of uh, I/O operation issued uh, from the client. So uh, the total latency. Uh, on a, this specific test is uh, about 120 microseconds. So this is the latency of the operation as it is issued by the client through the network, processed by the uh, store pool storage system, and uh, uh, return the data back to the client. So the breakout is of this 120 uh, microseconds, 86 microseconds are, is the actual time that, is, that was needed by the underlying NVMe device to complete the I.O. operation. Then we have a uh, network latency. This is on 25 gigabit Ethernet. Network latency between the, the client and the storage uh, cluster is 17 microseconds. And we have about 20 microseconds. That is the total uh, time for software processing of the request on the client on and on the uh, storage node, including uh, uh, any replications for write, uh, 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 all, all, all the checks on data processing, and so on. So you can see that uh, that the overhead of Storpool is only about 16% of the total uh, latency of the operation. So that's basically cut to the uh, to the minimum. Um, and uh, since Storpool is a distributed system. Uh, it has a linear scalability. So the more nodes you add to the cluster, the more performance you get. Uh, you can see here uh, that uh, uh, by adding nodes, you get almost a, a linear uh, uh, increase of the uh, total cluster 
performance. And even with a, a relatively small system of five nodes, you can get more than one million of IOPS. Um, on the diagram on the right, you can see that the latency of the operation doesn't depend on the scale of the system because all the processing is distributed by all the nodes. There is no uh, a central node or a bottleneck that can limit the, the throughput uh, of the system. So hardware lifecycle management, uh, it's may sound like an abs uh, abstract topic, but it deals with uh, a very real uh, task and challenges. And uh, many of you, if, if, you, uh, if you have uh, operated a traditional storage system, knows that uh, it has a lot of, brings a lot of challenges of uh, upgrading the software or the hardware uh, components of the storage system. In many, system, in many cases, all these uh, tasks of uh, hardware lifecycle management are related to uh, large maintenance windows and uh, downtime. Uh, with the distributed architecture of StorePool, uh, it allows uh, all the hardware and software software upgrades and hardware uh, upgrades to be performed without service interruption and without need of maintenance windows. Also, scaling out the, the system uh, is just adding a storage node. All this is live. Uh, all these operations are live. So one of the very di difficult operations with a traditional storage system is hardware refresh cycle. Usually this is uh, a complex, risky, and time-consuming data migration from the old system to the new one. Uh, with StorePool, this task translates to just a simple adding a node to the live cluster and removing the, the old node with the old hardware. So this way, you can replace all the nodes in the cluster one by one and uh, uh, do the full hardware refresh cycle without uh, uh, one second of downtime. Um, another interesting feature of this architecture is that uh, it allows you to relocate your cloud in a different physical location, again, without service interruption. So this can be done, again, on node-by-node -node basis. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, several projects that required uh, relocation of the storage cluster because of the uh, not uh, sufficient physical space uh, in, the, uh, in the data center. So all these uh, capabilities, uh, together with the uh, reliability features that uh, we saw a few slides earlier uh, uh, can give a, a, a very high uh, a very high reliability and uh, the uptime is measured in uh, in years so the the measured and calculated uh, mean time between outages for uh, the entire fleet uh, of managed uh, clusters uh, store pool clusters is over uh, 18 years. Uh, typically, uh, when you initially deploy store pool, you ne never need to, 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 to stop it again uh, for, for any, any maintenance work. You can just uh, up go through several uh, software, uh, major software upgrade versions and hardware uh, refresh cycles without, without need to, to stop your storage system. Mm. So, Store is built to uh, is made to build the fastest clouds uh, 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 in the internet. So uh, here report we made comparing the uh, uh, SQL benchmark of uh, several public clouds and compare it with a public cloud built with StorePool. So we compared uh, the cloud, uh, the public cloud of one of our customers with the most popular. Uh, hyperscaler and uh, the uh, other uh, popular uh, cloud providers. Uh, many of these, uh, so on this diagram, you can see on the uh, the, the uh, uh, SQL test. Can you hear me? Yeah. So um, on the uh, y axis, this is the number of transactions per second. And on the X axis is the latency of the transaction. So a lot of the cloud offerings are just not fit for database use cases because of the uh, low transaction per second that they can provide and the high latency of the transactions. So
So even compared with the uh, much more expensive offerings uh, that uh, ha has a high performance, uh, store pool, uh, cloud built with store pool have a two, three time lower latency of the transactions at, at the same time uh, they can provide two to four times more transaction per second on the same virtual machine with the same parameters, CPU, RAM, uh, and, uh, um, and, and, and this covering. Uh, and you can see there it is, it gives better performance compared even to uh, almost 10 times more expensive offering from AWS. So tomorrow we have a, a, a good demo, live demo on this, uh, uh, and uh, I invite you if you want, want to see this live. So, um, integration with Cloud Stack is built in, uh, Storepool driver for, for Cloud Stack is built in since version 4.17, but it is available as a separate add on uh, since uh, 4.11 release, I believe, something like five years ago, four or five years ago. Um, and in the latest release 4.17, it is built into the Cloud Stack. So every deployment of uh, Cloud Stack has a built in driver with Storpool. Uh, with this integration, uh, you can have a, a seamless management of the storage system. So the cloud administrator don't need to deal with, with the storage system. They can directly, they can only use the Cloud Stack uh, user interface or Cloud Stack API to create volumes, uh, virtual machines, do all the uh, storage management like. Uh, uh, resize volume changing, uh, uh, QoS storage tiers, and so on. So in, in their daily uh, life, they with this integration, they never need to interact directly with the storage system. Um, the integration of uh, uh, Cloud Stack, the Storepool storage driver, interacts directly with the storage system over the uh, Storepool REST API, and. Uh, uh, it creates volumes in store pool system on demand. For when a, a, a virtual machine is created by CloudStack, the corresponding volumes, so one volume per each virtual disk of this virtual machine, uh, uh, are automatically created in store pool and make them available in the hypervisor when the, where the uh, virtual machine is running. Um, this mapping of one-to-one -one mapping between the virtual disk and the storage system uh, is uh, allows all the features of the storage system to be exposed to the uh, to the cloud stack, and uh, uh, it has many benefit uh, many benefits, including for the end user the benefits is uh, nearly instantaneous uh, VM provisioning, uh, all the data management uh, and data features are done. Uh, live without uh, in, in flight, without need to uh, stop the virtual machine or restart the virtual machine, like disk resize, snapshots, and so on. So, this is the I'm very brief what Storpo is, and <laughs> yeah, I'll invite Slavka to uh, say a few words about the uh, actual uh, implementation of this integration. Venk said almost everything <laughs> about it, and it covered most of it. Um, uh, we support uh, CloudStack, uh, our plugin supports CloudStack versions from 4.113 to the main branch, but from version 4.17.0, uh, it's included in, in CloudStack packages. Uh, but in both cases, it comes with a separate jar. Uh, this uh, provides us uh, opportunity to man maintain the, the plugin and to add uh, uh, features or fixes uh, in the released versions already. Uh, the benefits uh, for the Storpo plugin is because you can create Snapshots and snapshots and templates based on volumes or other snapshots in the cloud stack uh, directly in store pool without uh, and this accelerate uh, accelerates the operations. Uh, the 
the private and public cloud uh, and the public uh, network are only used for traffic and because uh, because snapshots and templates are created directly in store pool. Uh, for each uh, virtual disk, uh, store pool creates a volume uh, cloning per, uh, I'm sorry by cloning pre-existing snapshots VM data and keep it on the primary storage and provision storage uh, uh, ratios are two to one to from two to one to six to one ratios. Um, we support probably all functionality that Cloud Stacks gives to the storage plugins, uh, like uh, instant snapshots, atomic snapshots, uh, creating templates from uh, from volumes or or snapshots which are created on the primary storage, you can skip uh, uh, copying them to the secondary storage. Uh, we support also live uh, VM migration with the storage uh, and uh, volume, volume storage migration. It's tested with, uh, to migrate NFS to store pool or CEF to store pool. Just forgot to mention about the the features. We don't support volume encryption for now, but uh, we have uh, uh, we have included this in the next release. I mean, we work on for this uh, to the next release. Uh, here, both primary pri primary secondary storage could be uh, provided by pool. So Sorry, a bit nervous. Uh, all storage operations are fully automated. Uh, the deep integration between between the two systems, CloudStack and StorePool, uh, is that uh, there is no need to manage the storage system directly because all interactions between CloudStack and StorePool are automated. Uh, you can reduce the secondary storage. There's no need to download the virtual machine uh, uh, VM templates for the VM deployments. It's uh, downloaded to the primary storage, storage only on the first uh, deployment of the virtual machine and is cache uh, on the storage. Um, there's no need for snapshot transfer. Uh, snapshots are implemented in store pool storage and do not need to be uh, to be stored on the secondary storage. Uh, there's no need to volume migration. Uh, the primary storage is shared between no host in the zone and any volume is available to any node. This uh, eliminates the need of uh, transferring large amounts of data. Uh, these features allow the secondary storage to be scaled down to a small NFS server offer often running on uh, the cloud stack management server, uh, greatly simplifying the cloud implementation and reducing its cost. And that's all. Thank you, Suavka. So we shall start with the questions. I will start first with online questions because we have two of them. The first one is for Vencom. Uh, I will read it because it's a little bit long. <laughs> as far as I remember, KVM and RBG makes live snapshots impossible. That's why we use a shared mount point with QCOW2 images. Does Torpo block device driver make KVM able to do live snapshots? Can we hear so, Vencom? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's correct with uh, with store pool snapshots are implemented as storage layer so it snapshots uh, does not depend on the uh, QMO and QCAO images uh, volumes in store pool are uh, role block devices on the host and snapshots are done not through the uh, QMO process uh, like a traditional uh, for example with the NFS implementation but uh, they are uh, implemented at the 
uh, by store pool using, so the driver just sends a command over the API to create a snapshot of this volume. So uh, all the snapshots are done at the storage layer and uh, they do not uh, rely on the QMU to uh, and QCAL images to, to do snapshots. So yeah, the, the answer is yes. Thank you, Venko. Our next question is also from the online platform. Does Torpo Storage support any additional features which are not part of Cloud Stack plugin yet? If so, what are they and any challenges faced to integrate them with Cloud Stack? Any plans to add them later? So maybe I'll try to answer this. Okay. Uh, one of the feature is uh, uh, live uh, migration from other storages like uh, NFS, Ceph, uh, to, to store pool. Um, can you remember some other features that are not? Oh, okay, one, one another unique feature is um, atomic snapshots. So uh, when you have uh, virtual machines with multiple drives, uh, it is important when you make a snapshot of this virtual machine, all the drives uh, to be uh, done as an atomic operation at exactly the same uh, point of time, so the data on the snapshot is consistent. And w w if you need to restore from this snapshot, you get a, uh, the virtual machine in a consistent state. So this is another, uh, I think, unique feature that you don't have with, for example, with NFS that you have a separate QCAL images. Thanks, Venko. Any questions from the room here? Hi, uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the simplest one, well, is uh, KVN the only hypervisor supported? Yep. Okay. With Cloud Stack, yes. Okay. And uh, the second one, just out of curiosity, you talked about, about uh, uh, implementing uh, hyperconvergent uh, infrastructures. In that case, uh, would uh, data locality be uh, a component in deciding which uh, storage node serve the workload of the compute node put on the same node? Uh, so it doesn't matter if it is uh, that it is using a dedicated storage nodes or a hyperconverged uh, architecture. The data is always spread equally across all the nodes. So every volume is uh, split uh, in small chunks and distributed across all the nodes. Uh, Storp will never uh, use data locality to have data on a single node because this has a, a lot of constraints. First, it can reduce the reliability, then it, you cannot fully utilize the entire performance of the, the, the full performance of the entire cluster. That's why we always distribute the load on all, on all, the, load, all, all the nodes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Other questions? No questions for Slavka? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you very much to the Storpool team. A round of applause for them.